theyeshiva.net. I'm going to begin today's class with a story that takes us back to the year Tov Kuf Samach Aleph, 1800. The Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, Rabbi Shnei Zalman of Liadi, was imprisoned by the Tsarist government twice, both because of a terrible Messira, some people informed upon him to the Tsarist government, and both were very serious accusations that almost cost him his life. The first time was two years earlier, Tov Kuf Nun 1798. He was taken to Petersburg, St. Petersburg, the capital of Tsarist Russia, where he was imprisoned and liberated on the famous day of Yutas Kislev, Yat Kislev. Tov Kuf Nun 1790, uh, 1798, the end of 98. Two years later, there was another Messira they formed upon, against him again, once again, and he was again imprisoned. This time, Tovkov Samach Aleph, the end of 1800, and he was liberated on Hanukkah. Either the Dritte Lichtel, the Fünfte Lichtel, the third night of Hanukkah, the fifth night of Hanukkah of that year, the end of 1800. His second liberation came about with the help of a Jew whose name was Reb Nossen Nota Notkin of a city of Shklov, a Lithuanian Jew. Reb Nota, who had very, very good contacts with the Tsarist government in Petersburg at the time. But he was from the Lithuanian community that opposed Hasidim and Hasidus. But he was somewhat more open-minded, so he made a deal with the Alter Rebbe, with the Balatanya. He told him, I will use all my influence to get you out, but a condition. The condition is that after you're out, I want you to visit the three greatest G'doylim, in what was known as the world of the Mesnagdim, the three greatest uh, Talmudic Chachamim scholars in Lithuania at the time, who basically represented that world of uh, the Litvisha G'dayla Yisrael. This was already after the passing of the Vilna Gon, who passed away uh, three years earlier, and Sukkot Tovkov Nanchesa. He wasn't around anymore. He passed away in 1796. But this was already a few years later. And if you'll go visit them, and try to create some reconciliation or understanding, I will put my full weight to, uh, to get you free. And the Balatanya agreed. He tried also to go to the Vilna Gon years ago, but it didn't work. And he gave him a tkiyas kaf. It was a handshake, like an oath, that he's going to do it. The first thing when he came out, Chanukah, Tovkov, Samachalov, he went to visit these three people. One of them was a Jew named Reb Moshe Chefetz. Reb Moshe Chefetz came from a little town in Lithuania called Savas. He was known as Reb Moshe Charif, the sharp Reb Moshe. And he was an extraordinary genius, an extraordinary gun and Talmud Chacham Torah scholar. The Balatanya went to visit him. Now he respected nobody. Compl absolutely nobody. Thank you. On the contrary, he dismissed everybody, he rejected everybody. He felt that nobody knew how to learn, etc. So when the Baal Atanya, the Alter Rebbe, came to visit him, his attitude was the same, especially here you're dealing not just with an ordinary person who doesn't know anything, but one of the representatives of Chsidis, of the world of Chsidis. So he was even more dismissive and cynical. And uh, he said, it, it can't learn in Bechlau, you know how to learn anything. So he said, ask, ask. First question, how many times has Abaya and Rava mentioned the whole Shas? Before Google. How many times has Abaya and Rava mentioned the whole Shas? The Alter Rebbe gave him a number immediately. He said, you're off by one. He said, no, you're mistaking because you're taking an old version, but you know there's another version. And then he started to speak to him about a lot of different sugis and Shas. Just standing, still very cynical. But slowly the ice melted when he realized that in front of him is standing one of the Goyne Hador, one of the greatest geniuses of the generation, or perhaps of many generations. So in the, in the middle, he says, so now I'm going to ask you a question. 
And this question I asked by many Goinim Bimei Chorfi, when I was a young man, or a young lad, a young bacher, a young person, I went to many Goinim and whom I met, and I asked him this question. And nobody can answer me this question. And if you will answer me this question, whoever, I always said, whoever answers this question, I will title that person Rabbi Alufi Umiyudoi. My Rebbe, my teacher, my, ma my master, my teacher. And my beloved, my friend. So the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya says, Frek, ask. So this was his question. Now, I just want to say that the question itself also needs understanding. Meaning, most people wouldn't ask these types of questions. Not because it's not a question, because they wouldn't even think that it's a question. Because their level of learning is so shallow that it's taken not a question. But for him, this was a serious question to the point that it was the, the parameter who could be called his Rebbe. He also told the Alter Rebbe then, he said over, that I once went to the Gon, the Vilna Gon, and I asked him a question, and he answered it in one way, and I answered it in a different way. And that's when I saw the difference between a Gon and a Kharif. He's a Gon and I'm a Kharif. He's a genius, but I'm a sharp person. I'm sharper. That's why I'm called Moshe Kharif. What was the question? So I quoted to you the two sources which his question revolves on. It's a contradiction of two madrashim. Rambam, an incomprehensible piece of Gemara. No, a contradiction between two madrashim. The first madrash is in Madrash Rabba Parshas Kisisa. Shmois Rabba Parshim Amdalat Piskazayat. The Jews create a golden calf. Hashem wants to obliterate them. Moshe pleads for forgiveness. Remember Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yisrael, Yaakov, the forefathers whom you made an oath to. And you told them that I will increase your children like the stars of heaven, and they will inherit the land forever. Remember, Zog de Medrash, Lama Hiskikan Moshe Gimel of us. Why does Moshe mention here the three of us? Remember Avram, Yitzhak, and Yisrael. Omer Abovin. Omer Akadish Baruchullah Moshe, and Imavakish Miyotcha Kashem Shebegashti Mizdoi Masara. Hamidli Mehem Asara Tzadikim Veni Mechalois. When a Moshe asked for forgiveness, Hashem says, I will make the same deal I made with Avram when it came to Zdoim. I asked him for ten tzaddikim, in whose merit I will not destroy Zdoim. Avram couldn't come up with ten. You bring me ten, and I don't destroy. Omar, Moshe said, I'll provide ten righteous people. Hare Ani, I'm number one, Aaron is two. Elazar, Aaron's son, is three. Itamar, another son, is four. Pinchas, Elazar's son, Aaron's grandson, is five. Yeshua is six. Kalev is seven. So you understand, from the Jewish people, he found seven people, seven tzaddik. Him, his brother Aaron, Aaron's two sons, his nephews, Elazar and Isamar. Moshe's great nephew, Pinchas, and two more people, Yeshua and Kalev, seven people. These are seven. We are the other three. Moshe didn't know what to do. He didn't have another three. Then Moshe says, Tell me, God, those who are dead are still alive. So of course. <laughs> Maybe they're more alive than those who are alive. But they're certainly alive. Omar, he says, If so, we have another three. If they're alive, if they're present, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, seven and three, you have ten. That's why he mentions Avram, Yitzhak, and Yisrael. These were the last three. Great, a medrash. Now there's another medrash in Parshas Akif. Parshas Akif, of course, repeats the story of the creation of the golden calf and the breaking of the tablets and Moshe asking for forgiveness. It's the second time around when Moshe tells what happened. Kisi says when it happened, Akiv is his repetition of the story 40 years later. So the Medrash in Parshas Akiv 
brings a similar story. Amalafan of Moshe. Moshe tells Hashem, Chashoivai sam kizdaim. Look at them like zdaim. Ma amar to Avram. Vayomer Hashem im emtza bezdaim. Chamishim tzadikim besay chayir. V'nasasi lechalamakim ba'avuram. Uviteloi adasara. He went down to ten. Don't treat them worse than zdaim. In zdaim you were ready to accept ten. Accept ten. V'animai midlacha me'elu shmoinim tzadikim. In this time, you were ready to get 10. I'll give you 80. Hashem says, Hame, give me 80. First of all, you have the 70 elders, the Ksiv. We have them. Gather 70 elders, and I will give them part of your ruach, part of your spirit. They will become prophets, and there are 70 prophets. So you have 70. Then you have Aaron is one, Nadav two, Avihu three, Elazar four, Isam are five, Pinchas six, Kalev seven. So you have 70 sages and another seven people. Hare Shivim Vishiva. 77 people. Amalaya Kadish Baruchu. Hamaisha Echan Oid Gimel Tzadikim. You said 80. You gave me 77. We are the other three. Amalafan of Ribbina Shalailam. If the living can't stand up, let the dead stand up. Let's bring in the merit of the three patriarchs. We have 80. The moment he brought in these three. On a side note, before we get into this discussion, one has to understand why in the first list you have not of an aviyu. In the, second li- in the first list, you don't have Nadav and Aviyu. In the second list, you have Nadav and Aviyu, a Lazari summer. In the first list, you don't have Moshe. I'm sorry, in the first list, you have Moshe. In the second list, you don't have Moshe. Mepharshim discussed these differences. There's an opinion that Nadav and Aviyu already sinned at that time because by Matan Torah it says, Vayechzu Asalikim, Vayoichlu, Vayishtu, at the end of Mishpatim. Not of an Aviyu and the 70 elders, so that's what the opinion of the first Madrash. That's brought in some of the commentators. Reb Moshe Chayfetz asked the Balatanya. He says, I want to understand the Svara Samachloikas, the logic between the two Madrash. In the first Madrash, Hashem says 10. He's happy with 10. In the second Madrash, he needs 80. What's the difference? Why the first 10 and the second, even 77 wasn't enough? I still need my 80. He said, nobody could explain to me what is the Svara Samachloikas between these two Madrash. What is the logic behind this argument? Now, I say most people don't ask these types of questions. They don't take medrash seriously, to be blunt. A medrash, okay, another story. Another, it's not, uh, what are you going to start analyzing now? Numbers 10, 77, 80. It's a nice medrash, you know? It's a nice medrash. It's a, it's a god, it's a story. But Goinim throughout the generations knew that just like you have to learn halacha well, you have to learn agada well. Even though there's different ways of learning halacha and different ways of learning agada. But the same depth and precision and meticulousness that exists in every line of Torah Shabal and Halach exists also in Agada. So for him, this was a very important question. Without skipping a heart's beat, the Alter Rebbe tells him the two views in the Medrash, Kisis and Ekev, he says, They follow an argument between two Tanoim and Shas. Rabbi Moshe Chayfetz knew Shas. Like some of us know Ashrei, or perhaps even better than Ashrei. So he scans through in his mind. He says, In the whole Shas, Bavli or Yerushalmi, there's no such argument. 10 or 80, there's no such argument. So the Alter Rebbe gave him an answer. This answer I want to explore today. The answer he gave to him was brief, because he knew the whole Mishnah, he knew the whole Gemara, as we will see. But to appreciate the answer, a lot of context and introduction is needed. And that's what we're going to learn today, among other things. So we're going to get back to the answer that the Balatanya gave Rabbi Moshe Chayfetz a little later in the class. We're going to begin now, the next step, with two psukim, one in Vayikri and one in Shlach. Both seem very similar. And the Chazal, as usual, have to make sense of the psukim which is where the oral tradition comes in and explains that we're dealing with two completely different situations. We'll start with Vayikra simply because of chronological order, and then Shlach. So you have it in your source, source number three, 
the end of Ayikra Perek Dalet Pasuk Yud Gimel. Ve'im kol Adas Yisrael Yishgu. An interesting situation. If the entire Adas Yisrael, the whole Kalal Yisrael, the whole community of Israel, makes a mistake. Ve'nelam dover me'ne hakal. And something gets concealed from the eyes of the call of the whole community, the whole congregation. And they do one of the mitzvahs that they're not supposed to do. Hashem says they do something they're not supposed to do and they do it. It was a mistake. And it becomes aware, they become aware of the sin. The call, the community has to offer. They bring a bull as a sin offering to atone for this collective sin. Parshas Vayikra. Parshas Shlach, the end of Shlach. V'chisishgu v'lo isasu es kol ha-mitzvah sa'ela asher dibur Adonai al-Moshe es kol asher tziva Adonai aleichem b'yad Moshe min ha-yoyim asher tziva Adonai v'alala derisech. If you make a mistake and warn them you don't do the mitzvahs that Hashem told Moshe, Everything he told Moshe from the day he commanded him, the mitzvahs, for the generations. From the eyes of the community, this was done by mistake. The whole Eid has to bring a bull for an oil offering and a goat for a sin offering. Two offerings, a bull and a goat. The Koyan will atone for the entire community of the Jewish people, the whole Klal Yisrael, and they will be forgiven. It was a mistake, and they brought their offering. They brought their fire, their oil offering, and their sin offering. The Nislach, this Pasuk is well known. It becomes the opening of the Kol Nidre Yom Kippur at night. The Nislach lechol adaz b'nei Yisrael v'lager agar b'soichem ki lechol ha'om b'shgaga will be forgiven for the entire community of the children of Israel and also the converts who live with them because the whole nation made a mistake. And this Pasuk, even though it's talking about a specific situation, was chosen as the opening, as I said, after Kol Nidri of the Yom Kippur services. What is the difference between the story in Vayikra and the story in Shlach? They seem similar. The community sinned, but there's different karbonas going on. So here we need the explanation of Tarish Shabalpa. So the Rambam, let's see how the Rambam codified it in his Mishnah Torah, Yad HaChazaka, where the Rambam always masterfully organizes all halachas of the whole Torah. The Rambam has a section called Hilchis Shgagas, which means the halachas of mistakes. What are Hilchis Shgagas? The halacha is, already in Parshas Vayikra, when a Jew commits a sin by mistake, inadvertently, called a shaygik, but not just any sin. A sin that if he would do it willingly, there could be a heavenly death penalty called karas, then, if he or she does it by mistake, they bring a sin offering. Usually a female goat or a female sheep. One of the two. Female goat, female sheep. That's the carbon chattas. How many sins are there that you bring a carbon chattas on? 43. 43. Only 43 things that a Jew, a man, or a woman does by mistake, and they bring a carbon chattas. One would be they desecrate Shabbos. A Jew plants on Shabbos, lights a fire on Shabbos, carries on Shabbos, cooks on Shabbos by mistake. He didn't know the halacha. He got mixed up with the day. He made a mistake. These are called shoigagim. He brings a chatos. A Jew eats on Yom Kippur. He eats on Yom Kippur. He forgets it's Yom Kippur. He's used to eating breakfast. Whatever the situation, how he forgot. I mean, there's a few conditions over there. But that's a basic shoigag. If he would do it willingly, he would be high of karas. He eats chametz on Pesach. He engages in immoral relationships. It's an inadvertent error. It's a mistake. He brings or she brings a carbon chattis. There's only 43 Averis like that. But here we're not talking about an individual Jew. Here we're talking about Kol the whole Klal Yisrael. This is a whole different situation. A whole different category. This is called the whole Tzibur's carbon. And it's a unique situation. Let's see how the Rambam explains the two stories. Rambam Hilchus Gagas Perik Yud Beis. Kol dover, I'm going to read fast. Kol dover shechayoven al shigigosei chatas kvua. Anything that if you would do it on your own by mistake, you would have to bring a carbon chatas. Im shagagu based in agadol ba'ira v'hoyru lahatiray v'shagagu aam ba'ira yason v'asu aam ve'im soimchin al ira yason v'achekach noida lebezdin sheto had a bezdin chayoven lahavi carbon chatas al shigigosin ba'ira v'afal pishel yasu hein ba'atzman ma'isa. 
Fascinating situation. Bezdin Hagadol, the supreme court of the Jewish people, which numbered 71 people and was considered the most powerful, largest, greatest authority of Klal Yisrael. Sanhedrin 71. They made a mistake. Not, a sm- not another court. Not a court of 23. Not a court of three. The central Sanhedrin. The central best. They make a mistake. For example, just to give an example. They tell the Jews, this Yom Kippur you're allowed to eat. In fact, it happened once. <laughs> if you remember Ashir Heshainer Rabba. The, the, the Shleim HaMelech's day. They made a, he made a built a new Beis HaMikdash. And the Sanhedrin said, we're eating this Yom Kippur. Then they realized it was a mistake. And they told Klal Yisrael you can eat. Or anything else. They say this blood, the blood of the heart, you're allowed to eat. If you eat blood willingly, you're high of karas. This food is not chametz. You're allowed to eat it on Pesach. They find out it's chametz. Any such type of mistake. You're allowed to, uh, you're allowed to kneel in front of this idol. You can't, you can't put down your head on the floor, but you're allowed to kneel. Or here you could go to the bathroom in front of this idol. They didn't think that's the way to worship it. Any mistake that you would be high of chorus, and they tell Klal Yisrael they can do it, and they do it based on their mistake. And then Bezdin finds out they made a mistake. The Allah is Bezdin now is responsible. They have to bring a chatas offering for their mistake, even though they didn't do anything. It's irrelevant if they did or not. What's relevant is they paskined, they instructed, they gave a hoirah. Everybody else is exempt because they were following Bezdin. Bezdin carries the achrayas. What do you bring? If the mistake was in Hilchis Avoy de Zora, they allowed Jews to worship by mistake. What turns out to be idolatry, they have to bring a bull for an oila and a goat for a chatas from every single shevet. This is the pasuk in shlach. If something was done by mistake because of enei aida, the eyes of the community were darkened. Torah Shabbat Pat teaches us it's not just any mistake, it's talking about a mistake in Avodah Zarah. What's the source? The source is as Rashi says, because it says here, V'chisishgu v'loi sasu, eskol ha-mitzvah se'el. They transgressed all the mitzvahs, everything Hashem told Moshe. And I ask you, is it possible a Sanhedrin should make a mistake about every single one of the 630 mitzvahs? It's a little weird, yeah? Or 43 mitzvahs. So Chazal says it's talking about one mitzvah, Avodah Zarah. Avodah Zarah is the essence of the whole Torah, this is talking about Avodah Zor. The Im, the Ramam continues, But if it was about another issue, for example, eating on Yom Kippur, eating blood, eating Chametz and Pesach, engaging in a forbidden relationship, etc. They say you could marry this person, it turns out it's a brother and a sister. These types of things, which as, which as you know in history, these things could happen. In this case, maybe kol shevet v'shevet parchatos. Every shevet has to bring one bull. V'zel amar v'parshas v'yikra v'im kol adas yisrael yishgu. You have to bring a par. These are two karbonis tzibur that Bezdin brings, but every shevet has to bring. In other words, Bezdin is responsible for it. Not every individual who did it, and they have to bring twelve. When a regular carbon, a regular avera. Not Avaidah Zorah, 12 bulls. And if it was Avaidah Zorah, 12 bulls and 12 goats from every shift. There are a few conditions here. Condition number one is the Sanhedrin is the one who has to give the ruling. Condition number two is most of the Jewish people follow the ruling. What do I mean by most? Most, Rambam Paskins means most of Kalal Yisrael living in Eretz Yisrael or most of the Shvatim, even if it's not a majority of the Jewish people living in Eretz Yisrael. So you can have 600,000 Jews, say, living in the Holy Land. If, if 301,000 Jews follow Bezdin, 
they have to bring this carbon for every shevet. Even if the majority of every shevet does it, even if it's less than the majority of Klal Yisrael, because let's say one shevet has a huge amount, disproportionate amount of numbers, they still have to bring this carbon. That's the halach and the rambam. These are the details of when you bring this carbon. It's called par helem dover shal tzibur in halach. The cow, the bull, the bull, not the cow, the bull that was brought when the tzibur was mistaken. When the tzibur was experienced helem dover, a mistake, a concealment of truth because of the Bezdin, because of the Sanhedrin. Next step comes the Sifri. The Sifri, which is the Medrash of the Tanoim on Parshish Shlach, says, How do you know? That if one of the Shvatim said they're not bringing, they're not bringing, you're not bringing on our behalf. This prevented the whole atonement. Talmud Loimar Vichiper al Kola das Bene Yisro. The Possek says Vichiper al Koyen al Kola das Bene Yisro. The atonement is for the entire community, means it's not 12 atonements. There has to be a kapara for everybody. So if you bring 11 bulls and 11 goats, one shavit's bull and goat didn't, was not brought for whatever reason, didn't work. Ah, you're bringing for each shavit separate. The Sifri says there has to be a kapora al kol adaz b'nei Yisra. Granted, this is a big chiddush. This is what the Sifri says. So the Mepharshim explained. Sifri de Beirav and others. Is this true also about the other par? This is in Shlach. What about in Vayikra? What about the bull that's brought for other Aved? It's not Aved Azar. Also, you have to bring, as we said, from every Shevet. As the Rambam said, you bring 12 bulls. Kol Shevet par Chatas. What if you only bring 11? So most Mepharshim say it would be the same halacha because you learn out this one from this one. There's a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, there's a Gzeir Shava from this carbon to this carbon, may ene, may ene. So therefore the same halacha would apply there. And they ask a question on the Rambam. The Rambam who brings all of these halachas in Shulchan Aruch, you don't have these halachas because you don't have the halachas of the time of the Beis Hamikdash, you don't have the halachas of Mashiach. But the Rambam who brings Kala Tayrakul, including the halachas of the Beis Hamikdash and the halachas of Mashiach in the future, why doesn't he bring this Sifri? That if you don't bring one, it's ma'akev. That's what the Mepharshim says. It's a on the Rambam. A strange thing on the Rambam. The Raga Chavar, in Safnas Paneich, in a few places, we'll soon see one of them inside, says they make two mistakes. First of all, the Rambam does bring it. And second of all, the Sifri says it in Shlach, not in Vayikra. Because it's only a din in Avoy it's not a din in the other Karbonas. And the Rekat Shavit teaches us how you have to read a Rambam. He says, look at the words of the Rambam, you'll see immediately that he brings it. Again, people would read a Rambam, it looks the same. But now take a look, let's go back to the first Rambam. Rambam Hilchus Gogas, Perik Yudbeis, the second paragraph, you see? Halacha Beis, Gogas, Perik Beis, Halacha Beis. Umawa carbon shemavin al shigogazu. What is the carbon? Im ba'avoy dezorah shagagu v'hoiru. If the mistake was in Avoy Dezora, what are his words? Mevin par liyoil v'sor lechatos mikol shevet v'shevet. Translate, they bring, they bring a bull for an oil and a goat for a chatos from where? From every shevet. Mevin par liyoil v'sor lechatos mikol shevet v'shevet. Look a line later. V'im b'shar kristu shechayovan ha'sheh gosun chatos kvu v'shogu guvahiru. If the other Avedas, they are a carbon chatos, they made a mistake and they told them to do it. Maybe call shevet v'shevet par chatos. Every shevet brings a par chatos. You see his change? He could have said the same thing before. Maybe call shevet v'shevet par liyoy levastar lechatos. Or he could have said here, mevi'in mi kol shevet v'shevet par chatos. So the Raga Chavagon says, obviously... The Rambam wrote it differently because it's a different din. By Avoy the Zorah, the din is that Bezdin has to bring from every single Shevet a parley of a Sarlachatos. Mevi'in. 
they have to bring from every Shevet Parle By a regular carbon Chatos, by a regular Aveda, which is Mechuyev Chatos, not Aveda Zora. He phrases it differently. Every Shevet has to bring a Par Chatos. Why the difference? Rekha says, because of the Sifri. By Aveda Zora, there's a Din that you need all of them. And as long as you don't have all of them, nobody received atonement. As long as Shevet Yehuda didn't bring their bull and their goat, Shevet Reuven didn't have kapara. You got to get from every Shevet one. By every other Aveda besides Aveda Zona, no. There's a din on each Shevet that they have to offer a carbon, and Bezin is responsible for it. Not every individual, but every Shevet has to bring. It's not Mivin Mikol Shevet. You bring from every Shevet. Every Shevet has to bring. You see the subtle difference in phraseology conveys this difference. The question is, why this difference? Why by one, if one Sheva doesn't bring, it's fine for the other ones? By Avaidah Zara, no. Let's change the subject completely. Parshish Mishpatim at the end describes that before the giving of the Torah, at the end of Mishpatim, Moshe Rabbeinu built altars, mizbichas, upon which the Jewish people offered offerings. The Gemara says that the Jewish people went into conversion. There was Tvila, there was Mila, and there was Hatzas carbon. They went to the mikveh, they had a bris, and there was a carbon. How many altars did Moshe Rabbeinu build? In Mechilta, there's an argument. Zakta Medrash Mechilta Mishpatim. Moshe Bono. Anybody has a chumash, maybe? Anybody has a full chumash? Oh. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to read the Pasuk inside here. I'll put it afterwards in the sources. We just, I just put the Michal, but I'll put also the Pasuk in the sources, which are always posted on the yeshiva.net, under the video. So the Pasuk in Mishpat, in Perik of Dalet, Pasuk Dalet says, Vayichtev Moshe is called Divri Adenoi Vayashkem Baboiker, Vayivin Mizbeach Tacha Sahar, Ushteim Esrei Matseva, Lishneim Oster Shifti Yisra. Moshe Rabbeinu builds a mountain, under the, uh, an altar, a Mizbeach, under the mountain, and 12 stones for the 12 Shvatim. And they bring Karbonus, Oilus, and Shlomim. Rashi says from the Gemara and Shabbos, Peiches, this is the fifth day of Sivan. It's right before Shavuos, right before Matan Torah. Hey, Sivan, he builds this. He builds a Mizbeach and 12 Matsevis for the 12 Shvatim. What does this mean? Of course, there's an argument. Zog de Mechilte, Moshe Bona Mizbechus, Yud Beis Avonim, Yud Beis Shvatim. Moshe built one Mizbeach. The Mizbeach consisted of 12 stones, 12 matzevis, 12 stones for the 12 Shvatim. Chachamim ha'emrim, asa yud beiz mizbechaz, kol achas min yud beiz evan. Moshe built 12 distinct altars. Each one consisted of 12 stones. Because in the Pesach it's not clear. It says he built the Mizbeach, but then he built 12 matzevis for the 12 Shvatim. So one pshat is, it's a continuation to Mizbeach. He built one Mizbeach, and the Mizbeach consisted of 12 components for 12 Shvatim. The other one says, no, he built a Mizbeach. And he built 12 Matzevis for the 12 Shvatim. In other words, each Mizbeach was made up of 12, but there were 12 different Mizbeachs. What's this? What's this for us? So you could say you could learn the Pasuk in two ways. One altar or 12 altars. No, why does this one learn this way and this one learns this way? Obviously, all these arguments, there's always a need to understand. They come from a a certain paradigm, a certain yesoid, a certain mahalach machshav, a certain way of looking at it. And automatically, when they see the Pasuk, this is how these Tanayim see the Pasuk. Other Tanayim see it in a different way. It doesn't begin with how you touch the Pasuk. It begins with how you touch life, with how you see things from a general perspective in many different areas as well. And then it comes across also in this Pasuk. In order to understand all of this, we have to learn a Mishnah. The Mishnah is a Meseches Hoirius, Dav Dalit Amid Beis. The Mishnah should now be pretty easy to understand. And once we learn the Rambam and the Psukim, Meseches Hoirius is the tractate in Shas that deals with Hoirius from the word Hoira. 
instructions that Bezdin gives to the Jewish people that are mistakes. As the Rambam puts it in his introduction, every human being makes mistakes. Every human being made of flesh and blood makes errors. It's built into Torah that you make mistakes. There's a whole Masech to Hoyrius, a whole, a whole Parshim by Yikri and Shlach for mistakes. Not mistakes by small people, mistakes by big people. The greatness of a person is not that he doesn't make mistakes. If he doesn't make mistakes, he's not a person. The greatness of a person is that he makes a mistake and he admits it. He's accountable for it. He can accept it. The moment you find a human being who is incapable of making a mistake, stay far, far away from him. They say there was once a man who told his wife, I never made a mistake in my life. The only mistake I made was back in 72. She said, what happened? He said, I thought I made a mistake. That was his only mistake in life. But generally, people who cannot make mistakes can often become dangerous people. So the Rambam puts this as an introduction. Even the Sanhedrin are capable of error. And it's built into the system. If they make an error, there's a halacha for that also. There's God's plan for that too. It's not the end of the world. That's part of it. The whole concept of tshuva is I made a mistake and I learned from it. I grow from it. So now let's see the Mishnah in Hoyrius. Davdal and Ahmed Beis. Next source. Zog the Mishnah. Hoyru Beis din vasu kala kala hoyru ban alpian. Beis din gives an instruction and the whole call or most. As we said, all of Klal Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael or most. Mevi'in par, ruba mevi'in par. You bring a, they bring a bull. And if it's Avoid Zara, they bring a bull and a goat. Who brings? Bezdin? This is the view of Reb Meir. Reb Meir holds. You bring one bull, one goat. Who brings it? The courts. Reb Yehuda Oimer, Yud Beis Shvatim, Mevi'in Yud Beis Parim. Mevi'in Yud Beis Parim, Mushnei Masasir. Reb Yehuda says, wrong. Twelve Shvatim bring it. They bring 12 bulls, and if it's Avoy Zara, 12 bulls, 12 goats. Rip Shimon Oimer, Yud Gimel Parim. 13 bulls for a regular Aveda, but Avoydus Kechavim Shloisha, Saparim, Yud Gimel Sirim. 13 bulls, 13 goats. Par Vesar Lechol Shevet Veshevet, Par Vesar Lebestin. Every Shevet plus the court. So we have three views of the Tanayim. Reb Meir makes it very simple. The Sanhedrin is guilty, nobody else is guilty. They told everybody what to do, 71 people. And by the way, it can be part of the 71 people. It has to be all of the Sanhedrin, or most of them, with nobody disagreeing, some of them could be absent, including the Mufla Shabadar, the greatest of them has to be among them. And they say this, and everybody does it. The mayor says there's one responsibility there. I, everybody sinned, but it's because of them. They bring one carpet. They bring a bull. If it's a fight order, they bring a bull and a goat. That's Reb Meir. Reb Yehuda says, no, they're responsible, so they bring on behalf of every Shevet. They have to bring 12. Reb Shimon says, 13. Every Shevet one, and there's 12 Shvatim, plus Bezdin one. Three opinions. What did we see from the Rambam? Who does he paskin like? Reb Meir, Reb Yehuda, Reb Shimon? Reb Yehuda. The cloud generally is Reb Yehuda and Reb Meir, Halacha ke Reb Yehuda. So the Halacha here is embraced as Reb Yehuda's Shitta. Reb Yehuda's Shitta is... Every shavit brings one. One bull for each tribe. Twelve bulls all together. And if it's a Zara, twelve bulls and twelve goats on behalf of every shavit. That's the halach of Rabbi Yehud. What is the logic, the argument between Reb Meir and Rabbi Yehud and Reb Shimon? Reb Shimon holds even Bezdin is accountable. But that's already a next step. But what's the argument between the two separate views if it's only Bezdin or it's to all of the Shvatim? The pshat is, Reb Meir says, look at the psukim. The psukim say, V'nelam davar me'ene ha'kohol. The kohol got lost. The kohol made a mistake. The pasuk says, V'hikrivu ha'kohol. The kohol should be mine. Who's the kohol? In Parsha Shlach it says, Vim kol adas Yisrael yishgu. I mean, in Parsha Shchut, Vayikra says, Vim kol adas Yisrael yishgu v'nelam dovem e'ne ha'kol, v'ikrivu ha'kol. It's about kol adas b'nei Yisrael, the kol. In Parsha Shlach it says again, v'osu kol ha'eda. So the mayor says, the kol is klal Yisrael. Bezdin represents them, it's one. I can understand the mayor. 
Reb Shimon and Reb Yehuda hold, no, it's 12. Where do you get 12? The Pasuk says, V'ikrivu akol. The call should be makriv. The call is one, a community. There's no hundred communities. Zog de Gemara minolon. The Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon shevet echad ikrikol minolohu. How do Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon say that every shevet is a separate call? There's no klal Yisrael. That's one. There's 12 klal Yisrael. There's 12 calls in Yisrael. Kol ha'eda is divided by 12. Amri Diksiv, the Pasuk says, you have a Pasuk, Azoi. Vayamoid Yehoshofot. The Pasuk in Divrei Hayam and Beis, Perik Chof. There was a king of Yehuda, a king of Judea, his name was Yehoshaphat. Yehoshaphat was facing then enemies from all directions. He was facing an enemy from Ammon that wanted to attack, Moyov and Seir, three nations who came to fight. He gathered the nation to pray by the base Hamikdash. Zog the Pasuk, Vayamad Yehoshaphat, Bikahal Yehuda Yerushalayim. I'm going to read the Pasuk the way it says, Bebeis Hashem lifnei echotzer hachadosh. Yehoshaphat stood among the call of Yehuda and Yerushalayim in the house of Hashem, the Beis, I mean, in front of the new courtyard, and they davened, everybody davened. The Gemara explains what the new courtyard means. If it was a new courtyard that they built, or they were mechadish new halachas with the chotzer, that's a separate Indian in the Gemara over there, but we're focusing on one detail. Bikahal Yehuda. He stood among the Kahal of Yehuda. Yehuda is one tribe. They're called Kahal. So Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon say when it says, V'ikrivu akol, it's a shevet. One shevet is called Kahal. Every shevet is called. Yerushalayim was populated by two tribes, Yehuda and Binyamin. It says, V'yamad Yehoshaphat b'kahal Yehuda v'yerushalayim. Maybe Yerushalayim means Binyamin. So he stood with two calls. One shevet is not called call. You need at least two, at least two groups, not one group. It says in Parshas Vayechi, Yaakov, before he passes away, tells Yosef, I will multiply you, Yaakov, and I will make you into a kahal, a call, a community of nations. Kahal Amim. When does he say this to Yaakov? Yaakov tells this over to Yosef, that when I came back to Eretz Yisrael, after 20 years in the house of your grandfather, Lavan, Hashem promised me I'm going to become a kohal. Which other baby did he have afterwards? Only one, Binyamin. Eleven tribes were already born before. Who was born in Eretz Yisrael? Binyamin. Shma From here we see. This is what the Torah is saying. You're going to get one boy and he's going to be called a kohal. Binyamin is called kohal because one tribe is called kahal Yisrael. Kahal. So therefore, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon say, when the Pasuk says, V'im nelam ha'dover me'ene ha'kol, V'ikrivu ha'kol, who's the call that's makriv? Not the whole Klal Yisrael. One shevet is already called kahal. So every shevet has to be makriv, because all of the shvatim were part of the sin. Because as we said, the majority of Klal Yisrael did this. Either the majority of the shvatim, or even the majority of Klal Yisrael, so all the shvatim have to be part of it. Rabbi Meir says no. Kahal means the whole Jewish people. Kahal means Kalal Yisrael. The 12 Shvatim together are called Kahal. Ikrivu HaKal means one carbon. Who brings it? Bezdin on behalf of Kalal Yisrael. No 12 Shvatim. That's the Machloikis in Mesech the The Rambam Paskins, as we said, like Rabbi Yehuda, Kahal is every Shevet. We have this in the Rambam. Let's see. Turn over your pages, side two. Rambam Hilchis Gogas, V'chol Par Mehen Nikre Par Helem Dover Shal Every bull that they bring is called Par Helem Dover of the Tzibur. Shenemar V'hikrivu HaKol. Who's the call? Kol, Kol, the call. I can't say it's, it means every call of the Jewish people. V'chol Shevet V'shevet, Kari Kol. Shenemar V'yamad Yehoshaphat B'kol Yehud. He brings the first Pasuk the Gemara brings. It's interesting he doesn't bring the second Pasuk the Gemara brings. He brings the first Pasuk. That's a separate discussion why the Rambam chooses the first, not the second, even though it seems that the Gemara rejected the first. Apparently the Rambam holds that you need both Pasukim. 
But what do we see here from the Rambam? Clearly, every shevet is called a kohal. If every shevet is called a kohal, when it says the kohal has to bring, and it says it's from the whole klal Yisrael, and the kohal has to bring, it means I need 12 karbonas. If it's a voidazar, I need 24. 12 bulls, 12 goats. If it's another, if it's another Aveda besides Avodah with a chi of karis, I need to bring only 12, 12 bulls. If this is the case, clear? Come back now to the Balatanya and Reb Moshe Chefetz. So he asked him the contradiction of the two Midrashim. In one Midrash, Moshe tells Hashem, I have 10 tzaddikim. God says, I need 10 like Zdoim. He says, here's 10. He gives 7. Hashem says, I need another 3. No problem, I have the 3 of us. The other medrash, he says, I'll give you 80. When he brings 77, it's not enough. I need 80. What's the machloikas? So the Balatanya tells you, Moshe Chayfetz, it's totally in the machloikas of Tanoim and Shas. He says, there's no such a machloikas. He says, it's the machloikas in Masech Tahirius. Hoyri is Davdalar Amit Beis, the argument between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon versus Reb Meir. What's the argument? If Kohal is Kalal Yisrael, or Kohal is Kol Shevet V'Shevet Kari Kohal. The first Medrash, Parshas Kisisa, follows the view of Reb Meir. The Medrash in Parshas Ekev follows the view of Rabbi Yehuda and Reb Shimon. Therefore, if you say the Medrash of Parshas Kisisa follows the view of Reb Meir, it's perfectly clear. Hashem says, let's treat it like Zdoim. I need ten tzaddikim for the Jewish people. Moshe Rabbeinu says, no problem. Here are seven. You need another three is Avram, Mitzvah, and Yaakov. Great. We have ten tzaddikim that represent Klal Yisrael. I'm going to forgive Klal Yisrael. But if according to Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, every shave it independently, is a mini Klal Yisrael, is a mini call. So if so, I need 10 for every call of Klal Yisrael. Because the two are separate. So if that's the case, we have Azoi. Moshe Rabbeinu comes and says, I'll give you 80 tzaddikim. What's the cheshman of 80 tzaddikim? Let's think about this. 12 shvatim. But Shevet Levi is out of the equation. Because Shevet Levi did not sin in the golden calf. Mila Hashem Eli. And Kol Shevet Levi, the whole Shevet Levi came about. So Shevet Levi is out. So we're left with 12. With a left with 11. So now we need 10 Sadikim for 11. For 11 Shvatim we need 10 Sadikim, right? How much is 10 times 11? 110. We're stuck. So no, it works like this. We need for 11 Shvatim 10 Sadikim. Comes Moshe Rabbeinu and he says, here are 77 tzaddikim. 77 is what? 7 times 11. 7 times 11 is 77. Okay, great. Hashem says, but you're missing 3 for every shevet. So he says, no problem, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Which one do Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov go to? <laughs> they go for everybody. That the father of Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehud, no, no Shevet is excluded from Ram Yitzhak and Yaakov. They're fathers of everybody. So 77 gives me 11, 7 times 11. So for 11, Shvatim, I have 7. Each one gets of Ram Yitzhak and Yaakov. So that makes it from 77 to 80. So therefore, automatically, you have 10 Sadikim for every Shevet. According to the Shitta that every Shevet is called. Reb Moshe Chayfetz heard this, and he said, Rabbi, Alufi, Umayudai, you're my Rebbe. And he gave him a chair that no, he said, nobody ever, he does this chair, nobody to sit on it, and he was mechabed him with tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, respect. He sent him away from his city with a tremendous, extraordinary covenant, Derek Heretz, as he responded this way. Come Zirak Chavar now, and it's interesting, if you look at Medrash Rabbah, there's a commentary. It's called uh, Eitz Yosef and Anaf Yosef. Eitz Yosef and Anaf, Anaf Yosef are commentators. They don't exist in all the editions of the Medrashim because there's the older editions of the Medrashim that have the older commentators. But uh, Eitz Yosef and Anaf, Anaf Yosef is a Mephodish that was uh, written by a man named Reb Chanoich Zundel 
Bir Rabbi Yosef of Bialystok. He passed away, Tofre uh, 18, 1859. He lived in Bialystok. He was known as a very big darshan, a very big maggot. And uh, he wrote a commentary on Medrash called Eitz Yosef Anaf Yosef. In his Sefer Anaf Yosef, on this Medrash in Kisisa, he brings this vart and he says, B'Shem HaChosid HaGon, Reb Shnei Yezal He brings it in over there in, the, in, in, in Anaf Yosef, and already that time he already heard the Shmu and he wrote it down. Now, according to this, says the Rakachover, somewhere else, you understand the Machloikas and the Mechilta. How many Mizbechas did Moshe Rabbeinu build? Why are they arguing? He says it's the same two people. Reb Meir holds one kahal. If there's one kahal, you build one altar. And you put in all the Shvatim there. The Chachamim say, as we learned in the Mechilta, that it was Yud Bez Mizbechas. Why? Every Shevet is its own kahal. Because every Shevet is its own kahal, every Shevet gets its own altar, its own Mizbeach. Granted, so this explains that. But now, what do we say, la halacha? La halacha, we say that every shevet is called kahal. That's why the Rambam says you have to bring 12 or 24. It also makes sense that the Medrash Rabbim Parshas Akiv is a later Medrash, Basroi, it's a later one, and it follows the shitta that every shevet is kahal. So he needed 80 people, not, uh, not 10 people, not 7 people. But now we come to the next step. What is the next step? That the Rambam showed us there's still a difference between the Avoid Zara carbon and the other carbon. By the Avoid Zara carbon, the Sifri says one is Ma'akiv. If one Sheva doesn't bring Kaput, it's not good. Other carbonus, you don't need that. And the Rambam therefore made that difference. You remember that difference? That by the regular carbonus, the Rambam said, maybe call Shevet Veshevet, every Shevet brings. By the Avoid Zara, he says, you bring from every Shevet. Not maybe call shevet v'shevet. Mevi in parleyel of a sar lechat is mikol shevet v'shevet. In other words, there's one ma'isa hava. You they bring it from every shevet. You have to go and bring it from all. In the second situation, a regular avera, every shevet has to bring. There's a separate ma'isa hava. There's a separate bring from every shevet. Why? Because if one doesn't bring, it doesn't affect the other one. What is now the distinction here? So in other words, even according to the Yehuda and Shimon, there's still a difference. Here there has to be by Vodazar of a chipper, al kol adas bnei Yisrael. You have to create a kapara for what the lashon. Have a chipper akoyin al kol adas bnei Yisrael. The nislach lechol adas bnei Yisrael has to be one slicha. So if one sheva doesn't bring it, it's ma'akiv. It's not good. By the other avedis, you don't say that. They all have to bring a carbon, but one is not ma'akiv the other. What would be now the difference? So now, we come to the next step. To understand a little deeper, what's the real argument? If every shevet is called kahal or not? And even if every shevet is called kahal, Avedazara is still different. So here, I'm going to introduce you to a term that is brought often in the works of the Tzafnas Panech, the Rekachav Gon, from the Rambam. The Rambam has, a few, of course, his works on halacha, Pirush HaMishnayis, Mishnah Torah, Sefer HaMitzvahs, etc. And then the Rambam has his philosophical works. Among them, most important and most known is Meri Nevuchim, the guide for the perplexed. Generally, throughout Jewish history, the two fields did not converge. There was halacha and there was philosophy. You had people who were masters in both. Reb Yigon, the Rambam, the Ramban, the Ralbag, Ambar Benel, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, Rabbi Yosef Olboy, some of the great Maharal of Prague, some of the great Choykrim of Machshevis Yisrael, who produced great works in philosophy, and they were also great Bali Halacha. But it was two distinct uh, models. One of the few people who saw Halacha through the prism of philosophy and learned philosophy through the prism of Halacha. In other words, Mishnah Torah and Moira Nevuchim of the Rambam, for him were one safer, was a Rakachova God. And it was a chiddush of azach, it was a phenomenon. He explains Meir Nevuchim through Allah, explains Allah through Meir Nevuchim. One of the terms that the Rambam discusses in Meir Nevuchim is two types of connections, two types of mixtures. Mixtures. It's a philosophical term, brought a lot in the Rambam and other works of philosophy, and it's known as Harkava Shechenis versus Harkava Mizgis. Harkava means to bring things together, to blend, to mix. Harkava, laharkiv yachat, to bring together. 
Harkavar Shechenes means bringing together neighbors. Shechenes from the word Shechenem. It's a mixture due to two things being like neighbors. Harkavar Mizgis means it's a blend that is created by a mixture of two things. They're not neighbors, but they're mixed together. What do we mean by this? So let's give an example. We have a Shia right now happening. People are sitting together. Everybody sitting in this room has a connection by the very fact that we're sitting together in the same room and we're learning Torah. We are Shechenim. You may even be touching somebody else's hand, but there's you and there's the other person. You're brought close together like two neighbors who live near each other their whole life. You take a salad and you mix into the salad. You have vegetables, you have tomatoes, you may put parsley, you may put pepper, you may put avocado, you may put tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, cut them into small pieces, they're mixed together. This is called harkava shechenes. And you could separate one from the other, you could go away from your friend. You could take out the onions from the salad, you could take out the lettuce or the tomato from the salad. Some kids don't like peppers, they make sure to take out the peppers, not on Shabbos because of boyer, but you could take it out, theoretically speaking. If you want to take out the bad from the good, you don't do that on Shabbos because of butter. You take out the good from the bad if you're going to eat it right away with your hands or with a fork or a spoon, whatever. That's all harkava shechenes. People together, you know, sometimes you sit on a plane near somebody else for 21 hours, you become friends by default. But then what happens? Have a wonderful time, you never see each other again. Maybe, maybe you exchange an email, I don't know. But fine, you were shechenes and then you separate. That's Harkover Shechenes. Harkover Mizgis means there's a Mizug. The two are blended together. For example, you mix wine into water. You mix wine into water, now separate. <laughs> now separate. Any drop of liquid you're going to take is going to be a mixture of wine and water. Fafalan. It's over. By the salad, the Rambam gives a marshal chitim and kitneus. You, you, uh, you mix beans, legumes, into, into chitim, into grain. Into, par- into, uh, into kernels of grain. Kernels of legumes into kernels of grain. It's mixed, but it's our cover shechenes. It's not our cover mizgis. You could separate the two. And if I take one piece, I don't have both. I have one. However, mayim and yayin, wine and water, and now any part that you take, you have everything. That's generally the difference between our cover shechenes and our cover mizgis. Another example would be lisha, when you need you take particles of flour and you mix them with water and you knead it into an isa, into a flour, into a dough. Now what happens? Any part of the dough you take, what do you have? Flour and water mixed. This is called har- nalacha, harkava mizgis. It's not harkava shechenes. The particles of flour before you mix them with water are harkava shechenes. One particle near another particle. Once you mix it with water, it becomes one chativa, one essence. It's interesting, the Maharal, I think in Netzach Yisrael, explains brilliantly that there's a medrash that the world exists because of three mitzvahs. Shloisha dvarim nivra oilam. Bikurim, trumas and maestras and chala. Bikurim, trumas. So the maral says it's not just three mitzvahs. It represents three different stages of reality. Bikurim, what's bikurim? You come to your garden and you see a new fig. A fig just got ripe. So you you, uh, wrap your... uh, you, uh, <laughs> new translate. <laughs> you tie a ribbon on top of it and you say, This is Bikurim. A new fig. You have a new pomegranate. You have <coughs> a new grape. And you fill up your basket with the new fruits of Shivas Haminim. Each fruit, when it becomes ripe, you fill it in your basket, you bring it to your shalim, you give it to the Koyan, the march of Bikurim that used to start after Shavuos and continued for the next months, where every farmer would come to the Beis HaMikdash and bring Bikurim. That's mitzvah number one. Mitzvah number two is Trumas and Maestris. Trumas and Maestris is, you don't go to a, fru- a tree and take a fig and say, here, Koyin, come, here's a fig, a grape. You take grain and you say, here. No, 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 there's a process. There has to be what's called Miruach and Keri. Gmar Meloch at Trumas and Maestris. You harvest the grain, then after harvesting the grain, you have to thresh the grain, and you have to winnow the grain, and you have to separate the dirt from the grain, and then you take all the kernels together, and you make a keri, you make a big pile, a big mound, and miruach, you smoothen it out, 
and that's called Gmar Malacha, it's ready for storage, and that's when it becomes Mechoyev and Trumas and Maestras. Yes, there are people who do it before, and it becomes complicated in Halacha, after Keri and Miruach, Gmar Malacha. That's the second mitzvah. Trumas and Maestras, they give to Koyanim and Leviim and poor people. Maestras Sheni, Maestras Oni, Maestras Rishon, Truma. And then you have the third mitzvah, Chala. When do you do Chala? You don't take kernels of grain and do Chala. You have to grind it into flour. And you have to mix the flour with water. And you have to turn it into an isa, into a dough. And then it becomes a chayiv and chala. So the maral says, and we'll soon understand the deeper dimension here, this represents three states of reality. Achdus, harkover shchenis, and harkover mizgis. Achdus is one fruit, the way it is. I take the fig. Harkover shchenis is what? A pile of kernels in one mountain. Miruach, Keri. That's her cover. Shechen is their neighbors. And then of dough, this is already her cover. Mizgis. It's a third component. So you have singular reality, a mixture, but not a complete mixture of a blend where they become integrated as one. And then you have the third level, which is a dough. That is her cover. Mizgis. Now, let's go one step deeper. And in our generations, we have terminology for this. I should say, Already the Tashbits, who was one of the Rishonim, explains some very profound halachas of Shatnas and Kilayim based on the idea of the Rambam of Harkov Shchenes versus Harkov Mizgis. That means already one of the Rishonim was using a classic philosophical term of Meir Nevuchim to explain Hilchis Kilayim. Now, now, before we go to the next step, let me show you an interesting example in halach, how this is expressed from the Raka Chavah's perspective. There's a Gemara in Shabbos. Take a look at the next source. Shabbos Tzadikei Amit Beis. Megabin Chayav Mishamai. Mishamboyna. Megabin means, from the word Gvina, curdling milk into cheese. I don't know how many of you, probably the Ezra Snoshim knows a little more about this, ever curdled milk into cheese. It's a fascinating process. How do you make from milk cheese? You have to take the milk... They would put rennet into it or some other enzymes that basically curdles the pieces, some pieces that become potentially hard, and then what's called the wee, the, the liquid that departs from the cheese. This is a process that's forbidden on Shabbos, beating the milk into cheese. Why, asks the Gemara? Mishumboina. You're building. You're basically creating a house. That's what you're doing. You're taking milk, which is liquid, and you turn it into a structure. It's called Gvina, Mishumboina. Take your Shalmi, Mesech the Shabbos, Perek Zayin, Allah Chabez, Hamagaben, Chayiv Mishum Losh. Your Shalmi says it's not Boina, it's Losh. You're kneading. You take particles of flour, you mix in water, and you make a dough. Here too, you made a piece of cheese. From liquid, you made a cheese. Your Shalmi. Boina and Losh are both Avas Malachas on Shabbos. They're both thir- one of the 39 Avas Malachas. What's the Machlaikis? What are they arguing about? So the Rakat Shavas says, Tafnus Panech Shal Sutsuvis Dvinsk, Zetalye Mavar Kavar Shchenis and Mizgis. There's a huge philosophical argument here. Dude, is it called Har Kavar Shchenis or Har Kavar Mizgis? I shouldn't say philosophical. A huge argument in chemistry. When you curdle milk into cheese, is the cheese called Har Kavar Shchenis? The pieces are neighbors or it's Har Kavar Mizgis? The pieces, are, the pieces are now mixed together as one. What's the difference between boina and losh? When you build a house, you don't build a house of one piece of material. You have so many diverse types of materials and they all come together in a house. But it's our cover shchenis. You have one brick here and a brick here, a plank of wood here, a plank of wood here, a screw here and a nail there, a beam here and a beam there. It's our cover shchenis. Losh, as we said, kneading a dough is our cover mizgis. When I take a p- brick of the house, I don't have every other brick. I have one brick. When I take a piece of dough, I have the dough, the flour, and the water mixed together. I can't say, oh, here you get the flour, here you get the water, unless you didn't mix it well. If you make it a dough, it's one mitzvah. What would be the big difference in halacha? There's differences in halacha. I'll bring out one. Quite an interesting difference. Take a look. There's a toysvus in Shabbos, Tzadikei Amir Aleph. Since you're allowed to curdle milk into cheese on Yom Tov Minatayra, because Eichel Nefesh, you want food, I feel a be'efsher, even <coughs> if you could have done it before. Because Minatayra, you could do every malacha for Eichel Nefesh on Yom Tov, 
אפילו, אפילו באפשר, אפילו לא יהיה מותר מדי רבנן אלא בדלא יאפשר. And even if מדי רבנן it's only מותר if you couldn't do it out of יום טף, אם כן, נפל בייסר ביום טף יהיה מותר לבנוייסר ביום טף. A question. If your house fell down on יום טף, you should be permissible to do construction on יום טף. דה מתוך שהותה בניין לצורך דה מגע בן אבא משום בוי נקדמה בסמוך, הותר נמי שלא לצורך. We have a כלל in הלכס יום טף, the halach is like בייס הלל, בייס יוד בייס. Mitoich shehutu l'tzayrich hutu nami shaloy l'tzayrich. Am I allowed to carry my keys on Yom Tif? Yeah. Am I allowed to carry my machze on Yom Tif? Yeah. Why? The Torah says you're only allowed to do melacha for cooking. The answer is be silol, unlike be shamay old, mitoich shehutu l'tzayrich hutu nami shaloy l'tzayrich. Once it's permissible for what need for oichel nefesh, it's already permissible for everything. As long as you need to do it on Yom Tif. As long as there's tzayrich hayoyim. I need the keys in order to open my house. I need the machza to go daven, Rosh Hashanah. As long as there's a need. Therefore, Beis Hillel learns when the Torah says you're allowed to cook on Yom Tov, you're allowed to do malachis for cooking on Yom Tov, it doesn't mean you're allowed to do malachis for cooking. The Torah was megala that those types of malachis that you usually do for cooking, you're allowed to do on Yom Tov. It's a gilui milsa. It's telling me Whatever you do for Eichel Nefesh, you're allowed to do for Yom Tov. Beis Shammai holds it's a very limited heter. If you want to cook, you're allowed to do it. Beis Hillel says no. Any type of malacha that you do for cooking, you're allowed to do on Yom Tov, even not for cooking. So I could carry a shul, I could carry a Yom Tov for Siddur, even though it's not for cooking. Because I could carry for Yom Tov, on Yom Tov. Why? Because you need to carry for, cook, for food, you need to carry. I'm going to eat by you, I bring you a kugel. If so, you should be allowed to build on Yom Tov. Why? Why? If you say curdling milk into cheese is boina, and you're allowed to curdle on Yom Tov, so you should build a house on Yom Tov. No problem. As long as it's a hot day, and you don't want to get suntan, burnt, so therefore you need a house, you're allowed to do construction on Yom Tov. Ay, it's not for cooking. If Megabin is a din in Boina, so that means Torah allows you to do Boina on Yom Tif, Because it's an Inyan that's Negei Toichel Nefesh. So it's like cooking, it's like carrying. Question of Toisvus. You should be allowed to build on Yom Tif, Build your house on Yom Tif. Construction permissible on Yom Tif. You see somebody who says you're allowed to build a house on Yom Tif, It's a Svara in Toisvus. V'ya Shloimar, you're right. Asa medir abonan da'ava uvda d'chel ke'eche da'asun and t'chinu v'arkada b'yom tif. You're allowed to. Min ha'toyer de yalad to build your house on Yom Tif if you need to live there Yom Tif. If you want to sit outside a whole day and you're comfortable, then you're not allowed to. But if it's toyer chayom, you're allowed to. The chazal, the rabbi said no because it has a mundane dimension to it. Just like they said you shouldn't grind kernels into flour on Yom Tif. You shouldn't grind, you shouldn't sift flour on Yom Tif even though it's oichel nefesh. Min ha'toyer de yalad to do it. But they said mesat uvd nechel and you could do it before Yom Tif these things. Here he says it's mitzat uvdin decha. But what do we see from Toysvus here? That menatayri a lot of build on Yom Tif. That's only if you say megab and chayav mishum boina. But if you say megab and chayav mishum losh, then you're not allowed to build Yom Yom Tif menatayri. How could you build on Yom Tif? There's no binyan, that's oichel nefesh. So binyan is not mutter. Granted. What's the machloikas here? Harkov shcheinis or harkov mizgis. Now, let's go one step further. We explain the difference of our cover shechenis and mizgis as people sitting together by a shear, making a salad, mixing in vegetables into the salad versus water and wine getting mixed. But I want to now take it a step deeper. If you want to go deeper, even when you mix liquids together, it's still hard cover shechenis. It's not hard cover mizgis. And here we have to understand the difference between a physical mixture and a chemical compound. I don't mean to take you back to chemistry in high school. Maybe some will learn it for the first time, but there's a difference between a physical mixture and a chemical compound. Let's explain. In a physical mixture, the components retain their original properties and they can be separated. Either they can be separated mechanically, like solids, 
You mix apples and oranges. You mix a bunch of vegetables and a salad with each other. You mix particles of grain. You mix kernels of grain and many other kernels of different vegetables or different grains or different legumes. And you could separate it. Sometimes in solutions, you can't separate it mechanically, but you can separate it physically. Let's take, for example, anybody here t- eats tea, it drinks tea with sugar cubes? You take your sugar cubes and you dissolve your sugar cubes into the tea. Is this Harkava Shechenis or Harkava Mizgis? The tea and the sugar now become Acholent. Better than Acholent. Acholent is Harkava Shechenis. <laughs> it's better than Acholent. The tea and the sugar become mixed together, right? Once it dissolves, you put the sugar in the tea. The tea is part of the sugar. But even in this case, the result is that taka, the tea becomes sweet, and you can't look at any, you can't take, a, you take a spoon of tea, and you say, here's the tea, here's the sugar. No, the sugar ultimately sweetens the entire tea. So it's l'chayda har mizgis. So you can't take a, a sifter and, and pour the tea into a sifter and have the sugar remain on top, and the tea come down on the bottom, unlike in the other examples we gave before, because it's not har kava shchenis, it's har kava mizgis. That's true. But what happens if you boil the water into a steam? What happens if you take it and you boil the water very, very hot into a steam? You know what's going to happen? It's going to leave a residue of sugar. So that means that even though the mixture is deeper than with our cover shechen is, and any piece, any part of the tea you're going to have is going to be sweet tea, but it's not integration where you made a new mitzias, a new entity, that is not tea or sugar, it's a new type of reality. No, no, you did not do that. It's true, it's not divisible. I can't just split the two into two. Can't split the tea into two, even with a filter or a sift. But you didn't make a new reality, a whole new type of chefza that is not tea, not sugar, it's a new reality. You didn't do that. Just like by a salad, you didn't make a new reality. It's a reality that is a mixture here, it's also a mixture. It's just not so easy to separate. Other things you could separate with your hands. Sometimes with a filter, sometimes with a sifter. That's what we call boiled. With tea, you have to bring the water into a hot boil, and then it will leave a residue of sugar. What this means is that you didn't create anything really new. What you created was sweet tea. <laughs> it's not a new reality. It's tea that's sweet. That's what you did. But now let's talk about chemical compounds. Chemical compounds is a whole different reality. You basically take atoms of the compounded elements which combine together. Different atoms, different types of atoms that combine together and they form molecules. They form molecules of a new substances. The properties now are not like those of the original elements. For example, we don't have to look far. Let's take water here, Zabisilvasa. Right? What is water? Every drop of water is a combination of what? Of two, of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And as these atoms come together, they form what's called molecule of water or molecules of water. What happened here? Here is where you have the real Harkova Mizgis. It's not you dissolved sugar cubes into tea. Here you create a whole new identity, a whole new reality. It's called water. It's not called hydrogen. It's not called oxygen. Here the items come together and they create a whole new reality. This is what a chemical compound means. That would be an example of our cover mizgis on a deeper level. Such a compound is formed through a chemical reaction. And only another chemical reaction can break it up. How exactly are you going to break up the hydrogen, separate the hydrogen and the oxygen from the water? What are you going to do? You're going to put it through a filter and the hydrogen will be separated. You'll boil the water. No, no, no. You created a new hefza, a new reality by the different atoms coming together, creating a molecule. You need a chemical reaction to break it up. That's a deeper level of our cover miscus. So now let's come back to our discussion here with the Jewish people. When you look at the Jewish people, what do you see? What do you see of the Jewish people? I'll take a drop of water if you don't mind. 
our cover mizgis. We're going to talk about our cover mizgis now, so I'll digest a little bit of our cover mizgis. So now, let's bring it together. And let's learn a shtickle from the Ragachava inside, Safnas Paneach, Madura Tinyana, right after the Toysvis, you see. And here is where it comes together. Zogdur Ragachava. Yesh nafkeminne bein helem dover gabe shara vedas de chi of chorus. The oz le didon mevi kol shevet korban befnei asme beged de prat. There's a big difference between the Helam Dava by other Avedis, where there's a Chi of Karis, that according to us, according to us means according to Rabbi Yehuda, which is the Halacha, every Shevet brings its own carbon begeder prat. Every tribe is seen as an individual entity. Every Shevet is a call. And when you learn well the words of Rabbeinu, the Ram and Ilchus Gagas, they don't stop one another. I bring my, my shavit brings, your shavit brings. We're not dependent on each other. Why? We're individuals. When it comes to a mistake, this says over here, the Shvatim stop one another. This is what I said before. Look at the words of Rabbeinu, the Rambam, the Nokat Mivin Mikal Shavit. Back to that drama that we discussed earlier, you remember? By Shigas of it says, they bring from all the Shvat, they bring from every Shavit the carp. By a regular Aveda, it says, every Shavit brings. Here it's one Mivin from all the Shvatim. In other words, it's one act. So if one says, I'm not coming, I didn't bring anything, stop it, it's worthless. The other one he says, by a regular way, maybe call shave it. You bring and I bring. You didn't bring, I still brought. A diuk in the Rambam. It's all the Sifri. Not like those who say it's the same. Completely different. In other words, even, so this is very interesting. This is almost like Reb Meir. Every shave it brings, but they're all dependent on another. It's like one. It's not like 12, it's like one. So Reb Meir holds only one carbon for the whole Kla Yisrael. Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon hold every shevet gets a carbon, every shevet. But by Avodah each one depends on the other one as though it would be one. It's like twelve which become one. That's the difference. I'll call upon him. So now he gives us his explanation in around six words, and we have to figure it out. I'll call upon him. Gabe shigigas avoid the zara, shom ha kapara al kol yisrael begeder nekuda, sheena mischalekes, u begeder harkova mizgis. By avoid the zara, the atonement is on the, all of the Jewish people as a nekuda, as a seminal, indivisible point, as harkova mizgis, as a blend of a chemical compound, which is one, kivon, shemipi hagvura shamano. Because Avodah is the only mitzvah that we heard directly from Hashem. Everything we heard from Moshe. The Gemara says, Makas, Anoichi v'loyilacha, right? Torah tzivalanu Moshe. Torah is the numerality, is the gematria, the numerical value. Tav vav rosh, rosh, tav vav rosh, tav rosh yud alef. Torah tzivalanu Moshe. Moshe gave us six hundred and eleven mitzvahs, either six hundred and thirteen. The first two commandments, I am your God, don't have any other gods. That's his explanation. That's why it's a Nakuda. Klal Yisrael is one. There's no division here. It's our cover mizgis. It's a chemical compound. There's no distinctiveness. Now see how this expresses itself in so many different places. The Kohen Gadol wore eight garments, right? Two of them had the names of all the Shvatim. Why, we're afraid that you're going to read one, you're going to forget it, you need to see another one. The Choshen, the breastplate had on every stone the name of one of the Shvatim. He had 12 stones. 
right? The Arba Turim, the four lines of the Choshen and Parshas Tetzava. And each one had the name of a Shevet with its color. But then on the Aphoid, which was the apron, he had two straps coming down. And there he had one rock here, one rock there. And he had all the names of the Shvatim. So the Rakat says, what's the difference? Choshen is Harkavah Shechenes. Aphoid is Harkavah Mizgis, meaning... Avne Eifod mechaprim al avoid azorikim of urbizvach. The Gemara in Zvach and Peche says that the stones of the Eifod atoned for avoid azorah. How you call ashvatim or ravin zebazekim of urbizaita. So, Saita Lamedvav, by the Eifod, all the shvatim are mixed in. Because when it comes to avoid azorah, there's complete oneness. Mipiagvura shamanu. Just like by the par helam dover for avoid azorah, all the shvatim are ma'ak of one another. So, the Avne Eifod here, they're all mixed in one. By the Choshen, every Shevet is separate. Kahal, it has its own call. HaKavr Shechenes. Avel Kabe Chatos, Kahal. The other Chatos that the call brings for a regular Aveda, Kahal Sharchei Avi Krisis, have a call Shevet Nifrit, Dag Begeder HaKavr Shechenes. Every Shevet is separate. I, they're connected to each other, like neighbors. We're good neighbors. Good fences, good neighbors make. We're all individuals. The Shvatim are like a family. It's a call. They come along together as our cover shechenes. When it comes to avodah zara, klal yisrael is our cover mizgis. Vaaz imheimir echad mishevet zal carbon shel shevet acher ein eloika. Lamai nafkemini brings a whole new nafkemina. There's a din of carbon tmura. What's tmura? Tmura is parshas bechukaisa. I have a sheep. I dedicate my sheep as a carbon, and then I say, you know what? This sheep. I have Beirusha for my Elta, 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 Elta Baba from Fad the Krig. I don't want to give it up. I'll take another sheep, maybe even a nicer sheep. Lo Yomir, you're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to exchange one carbon. Vim Hamer Yimirenu, Vayahu Smurasi, because they're both carbonates. You have to bring them both as carbonates. That's the din of Tmura. I cannot do Tmura on your carbon. I could do Tmura, I take your sheep, I say, I want to exchange it on that. Now you have to bring two, you don't have to, it's my problem. Ain't not the maktash dovash, ain't shaloi. I can't take your watch and give it to the base hamiktash. Doesn't work that way. Carbon has shutfin. What if we're partners? So it's interesting. I can't make it a din Tmura, but it's an Avera. I'm not allowed to make it Tmura, I get Malkus, because I have ownership over it, because it's a partnership carbon. So the Rekha says, here's the question. Think about this. We do have a desire by mistake. I'm Shevet Reuven, you're Shevet Shimon. We're both bringing our, our goats. I take your goat. I take and I exchange one on another. It doesn't work because whenever there's a carbon of many people, you don't have the authority to redefine the other person's animal. But it's an Isur. It's an Isur of Malchus. So he says, what about here in this case? Did you do an Isser? So he says, it depends. If it was a regular Aveda, it's our cover Shechenes. So even though my goat and your, my bull and your bull are going together, it's two separate realities, like two families living near each other. So now I take my goat, I exchange it on your goat, it's worthless. I take my house and I exchange it with your house. So it becomes my house, it's ridiculous. It's all, it's nothing. But by Avoy the Zorah, he's Mechadish, it's our cover Mizgis. It's like one. I have part in you, you have part in mine, so therefore there's a din tmur, there's a din of malchus, even though it doesn't work because it's a carbon of it's a carbon of a community. Gabe avoy de zara, kola shvatim ikiv behem. Ba avoy de zara, all the shvatim am akiv, there's a shamanam epi agvura. This we heard from Hashem. Loi shayi chiluk zmano makim. There can't be a division of space or time. There's no division of space by God, there's no division of time. Before, after, east, west, here, there. Vekulam biskira achas. Gemara in Rosh Hashanah. Everyone is skira. Skira means a, a scan. Liskar. Everybody, it says, Kulam niskar. Rosh Hashanah. Kulam niskarin biskira achas. He scans everybody in one scan. And then the Gemara says, Oivrin yachat kibne morin. They pass by like sheep. Which one is it? Two separate realities. Hashkavah shechenis, hagavah mizgis. 
There's each one passing, and then there's one scan. It's one reality. There's no difference. It's a chemical compound. It's a water molecule. Even though there's many atoms that make up the water molecule. When it comes to another helim dover, every shevet is on its own. Chazal say by Matan Torah, you go up, iron goes up, everyone had their own mechitza because both components are true. There's Moshe mechitza b'fnei atzmai, iron mechitza b'fnei atzmai, even in one shevet. And then there's the element of Avedah Zara of Harkava Mizgis. What does this mean? What does this mean? I'll give an example from another realm completely and you'll see how it fits in. The Rekha has a chiddish, also a chiddish maftiya. He says, why by a mikveh can't you make a mikveh of mayim shuvim? It's a strange, interesting thing. You have a mikveh, you want a pool of water, you should be able to go in and become pure. You need rainwater or natural water, spring water. Mayim shuvim, what's mayim shuvim? Mayim, water that's drawn by human activity. I go to a sink, I fill up a barrel of water, I put it, I put it in the mikveh. If the mikveh is made up from that water, it's not good. Unless, of course, the different mechanisms in halacha, hashaka, zriya, how you make the mikveh part of a natural body of water. But it has to be a natural body of water. So the Rekha Shavah is mechadish, and he says that the water of a mikveh is not our cover shcheinis, it's our cover mizgis. The 40 sa'ah that make up a mikveh are not 40 distinct measurements of water that happen to come together in a bathtub. In, in, not in a bathtub, in a, in a pit, of, in a, a mikveh. It's our cover mizgis. Halachically, the halacha views this body of water as one singular entity. And he says, therefore, if a human being makes up the body of water, a human being, by definition, lives in a world of fragmentation. He cannot create that type of harkava mizgis. He only creates harkava shcheinis. Therefore, the mikveh needs harkava mizgis. And therefore, it has to be natural, it has to be divine. Because harkava mizgis comes from the divine. It comes from the divine quality. To be able to transform two separate things into a new entity that is not defined by one or the other into a whole new, new entity. It's not tea and sugar. It's a whole new reality. What does this mean? What does this mean? So let's take one example. What is a mikveh used for? A mikveh is used for people who are impure and they want to become pure. What is impurity? Impurity means that the person is separated from a world of oneness. The world is one. A person is one. The soul and the body are one. The whole universe is one. Enoid mulvada, everything is one. But we live in a fragmented universe and sometimes I could behave in a way in which I become separated from oneness. I want to now go back into a world of oneness. I need our cover mizgis. I need water which is completely one that's a divine creation. When else do people use a mikveh? People use a mikveh, it's essential to a marital relationship. What is marriage? Answer this question. Harkava shcheinis or harkava mizgis? What does it mean to be married? It's a dormitory? A yeshiva dormitory is harkava shcheinis. You could dorm with a bacha for 16 years in yeshiva. But it's harkava shcheinis. At least we hope so. Your neighbors. Your neighbors. That's what you are. You sit with the chavrusa, your neighbors. What is marriage? Is marriage, okay, now the dormitory changes from a boy to a girl. <laughs> that's not marriage. <laughs> Some people view marriage that way. But if that's the attitude, it's really not going to work. <laughs> it's a whole different reality. But you're dealing with opposite people and it's not easy. Here, daughter Shebi Akiva, Masech Tesei Tadaf Yedzayin, Ish V'Isha Zachu, Shechina Shriya Beneyem. The Shekhinah dwells among them. Why do you need a Shekhinah? So the Rakat says, because you have to create a Harkov Mizgis. You need to create a chemical compound. It's not two people getting along, tea and sugar. Now the question is, who's the tea and who's the sugar? <laughs> now, tea and sugar is not such a bad marriage, by the way. It's, it's, it's better than a salad, right? It's better than a salad. But it's still, it's tea and sugar. And you boil the water up, it gets hot, and the two get separated. With the heat, the two get separated. Harkov and Mizgis is a different type of reality. Harkov and Mizgis is marriage. is not about a man. It's not about a woman. It's the man and the woman are recreated into a new mitzvah, into a molecule of water, into a new entity. That's a whole different type of relationship. There's oneness. 
Ish ve Isha become one. Why? Because there's Yud and Hey. Rabbi Kiva says Yud and K come together, and the divine name is indivisible. Stam and Tirasant. Ah? Bahayula Basar Echot. One flesh. Not just physically, emotionally, spiritually, existentially. Now, in order for the two to become one, they also have to be two. If the item of, uh, if the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom want to destroy each other and don't respect each other's boundaries, you're not going to have water. What creates water is that you have hydrogen and you have oxygen. And each one contributes its unique properties and together they create up a new hefza called water. That's why you need the individual. But what is a capable of happening? Harkava Mizgis, only of the Shechina. Because we're not, we're not the same, we're separate. I have my ego, you have your ego. I have my shtick, you have your shtick. I have my idiosyncrasies, you have your idiosyncrasies. I got my mishagasin, you have your mishagasin. I have my insecurities, you have your insecurities. I don't know about you, I know about me. <laughs> but everyone, Baruch Hashem, has a baggage and a, a pickle. And if you don't believe me, you can ask your therapist. And if you don't believe him, you can ask your mother-in-law. And if you don't believe her, you can ask your wife. And she'll be at Masbi Betuf Tam Vadas. Perhaps. Unless it's our cover Mizgis. And then she'll say, we have an issue. <laughs> you have an issue or we have an issue. It's a different Mahalach. Miksha Achazov. The Menorah to be Miksha Achazov. Miksha Achaz means it becomes indivisible. You can't say this is from the foot, this is from the head. It becomes one new entity. Miksha Achazov. So now the mikveh is used before intimacy. Before relationship. Why? Because in order to be able to create a relationship where there's oneness, oneness comes from one source. As long as I'm living in a fragmented imagination, you are you, I am I, I can't become one with you. I could be a good neighbor at best, and that's also not so bad. It's also not so simple to be a good neighbor, because I want you, you want me. I want your territory, you want my territory. But at least I could learn respect. The more I go back to the source, deeper and deeper and deeper, the more diversity merges into oneness. We spoke about Sri Saima once with Leinah, who covered Zebaza, the difference of Akiva and other Tanoyim. We spoke last week. What did we speak last week? Uh, what was last week? Also, Arakat Shavar. Uh, the Oisius, exactly. The Oisius. Oh, you remember. Are they, se- Are they separate or they're cohesive? Similar word. The world is a Rishus Harabim. Everything is separate. It comes from one source. Hashem Echad. Ein Oid Mulvade. There's a oneness. But the more godliness is concealed in the universe, the more we experience a separation. The more I can experience the divine space in every reality, the more I could see the oneness of the universe. The closer I get back to explore the spiritual divine core, the chius of Elokuz, the godliness of every aspect in the universe, and suddenly the world becomes one. So it graduates from separation to neighbors, to mixtures, to chemical compounds. We move on and on and on. So the Maharal says, the Medrash says, the world was created for three things, for Bikurim, and then you go to Truman and Meiser, and then you go to Chala, with this complete oneness where the particles are not separate anymore. All the particles become integrated together with the water, and it's an indivisible world. It's our cover Mizgis. But we live in a fragmented world. So Reb Meir, from the word Oir, Reb Meir is the word Oir, light. The Gemara says in Eir in Yud Gimel, that Reb Meir was deeper than everybody. Why is the Halacha not like him? Because nobody can understand what he was talking about. Lo yordu chachamim lamed al soiv daitai. Because by Reb Meir, the world was one. Everything was one. The Gemara says, the Medrash says in Bereshis, they looked in the Sefer Torah of Reb Meir. It didn't say Kosnus or with an ayin. It said Kosnus or with an aleph. Adam and Chava put on tunics of leather. No, tunics of light. What type of Sefer Torah is this? You start changing letters. <laughs> Reb Meir had a different Sefer Torah. What is this, a new halacha? The Pshat is that Reb Meir saw an oir oir. He had the same oil like everybody else. But he saw an oil, oil. In the, in the oil, what is oil? Oil is cover, oil is skin, oil is a cloak, oil is leather, oil is a garment, a beged. Reb Meir didn't see the covering. Reb Meir saw the light through. He saw always the light. That's why he could learn from Elisha ben Avoy. The Gemara says, how can he learn from Elisha ben Avoy? Everybody else 
re- disregarded the Elishman of he was a heretic, what does the Gemara say? Toichai Achal, Uklipasai Zarak. He could discard the shell from the inside. It wasn't a problem. He took the inside. So the Maggid says, the Maggid of Mizrich says, one second. The Gemara doesn't make sense. What do you do first? You get rid of the shell or you first take out the inside? First you take over the shell. Yeah, what do you do with a banana or an orange? You first peel the shell, yeah? It says, Toichai Achal, Uklipasai Zarak. The pshat is, the reason he could be Kliposei Zarak is because he right away sees the toich through the klipa. It doesn't disturb, it doesn't block him. He sees the oneness everywhere. Everywhere he sees oneness. That's Reb Meir. So when he looks at the Jewish people, it's an indivisible nation. Oy, he sees the lichtekeit, nothing blocks, no divisions. Whenever Reb Meir stands up in front of Jews, he sees complete oneness. Indivisible oneness. So when the Torah says, Kohol, who's Kohol? Kohol is Klal Yisrael. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon are different Madrega. Shimon is from Lashon Shmiya. Hearing. It's not, it's not Meir. It's not Re'iya. What's the difference between seeing and hearing? What's the difference between seeing and hearing? When you see something, let's say you go into a house. You see a beautiful dining room, a living room. Which part do you see? You see everything. You see the klal. Then you start analyzing the details. What about when you hear a story? What do you hear? Detail by detail by detail. And then you bring together the pratim into the klal. It's two different experiences of life. In Reb Meir, you see the klal right away. You see oneness. Reb Shimon and Shmiya, no, no, there's details. And in the details, you then put together the klal. Reb Yehuda is also not Reb Meir. Reb Yehuda comes from the word hoida. Hapam oide Hashem. It's not seeing, it's submission, it's hoida. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon say, we can't experience in halacha the oneness of Klal Yisrael as one. Kol shevet v'shevet ikriko. A shevet represents a tribe, a mahalach. Kriyas Yamsuf, the sea split into 12 tribes. Every soul has its destiny, its derech, its harkover shcheinis. We're neighbors. But there's individuality between one shevet and another shevet. And that's why koho is every shevet. Besides one thing, Avodah Zara. When it comes to the Aveda of Avodah Zara, this was heard from Klal Yisrael Mepi HaGvura. Whenever the Gvura, whenever the Rebbeinu Shloilam himself is revealed in the world, everything is one. There's no separation of time. There's no separation of space. There's no separation of faculties. It's Skira Achas. It's Nekuda She'enam Ischalekes. That's the whole world. It's the ultimate string theory of the universe. There's one nekudas ha'achtos, nekudas ha'alakos. In other mitzvahs, we can't breathe that experience. Avoy that's what the Jews experienced. Anoichi el no was mepi ha'gvura. So therefore, when they sin in avoy what is affected? What is affected here is the essential nekudah of Klal Yisrael. What has to be fixed? That has to be fixed. So even though they hold that still every shevet has to bring, it's not one, not like Reb Meir, but they're ma'akiv one another. If I don't bring, you also can't bring. In other mitzvahs, I bring, you didn't bring. I'm sorry, it doesn't affect me. The arev in zebozeh is not a chemical compound. It's a different type of mixture. It's our cover shcheinis. Call Yisrael, arev in zebozeh ba'avay is you're one. If you're one, then if I didn't bring, you can't bring. What does the Ramam say? Mevi'in mikol shevet v'shevet. Not call shevet v'shevet maybe. Mevi'in me call shevet v'shevet. Why? Because here it's one hava. Mevi'in. You bring from every shevet. From every shevet. But you bring them all. In the other Avedis, every shevet brings on his own. There's a big difference. The chosh and mishpat. Harkover shcheinis. Everybody is a kohol. The eifai, the davay dezara. Everybody is completely one. There's absolutely no division. Completely, complete, complete oneness. So therefore, even Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, when it comes to this point of Avodah Zorah and Amuna, here they also say that you're dealing with one Nekuda. What do we mean one Nekuda? There's 12 bulls and 12 goats, but they're really treated like one. Just like if you would split a bull in two. It wouldn't work if you take out one bull and one goat and I'll say, I'll go for atonement without you. I can't get atonement without you. You know why I can't get atonement without you? Because there's no I that's outside of you. My I and my you, I and thou are one. If I don't win, 
you can't win. If I lose, you also lost. And if you lose, I also lost. In a marriage, we see sometimes people think they're trying to win the fight. If your wife lost, you also lost. And if the husband lost, the wife also lost. For me to win, I need you to win. And for you to win, I need a win. For you to win, we all have to win. It's a different paradigm, it's a different experience. Can a person live like this with Klal Yisrael in every mitzvah, in every Aveda? The Buddha and Abshim say, no, we live in a world of individuality. We live in a world of Eina Nili Mili. There's my avoided, Moshe Mechitzel Atzmai, Aram Mechitzel Atzmai. There's me as an individual. Then there's me as a Shevet. My family, my group, my Shevet. It has its own derech, its own place in Eretz Yisrael. The place in Eretz Yisrael, the settlement, the territory in Eretz Yisrael was designated based on the soul and the chemistry of that Shevet and the particular location in Eretz Yisrael, not just geographically, but spiritually. Every part of Eretz Yisrael has a different energy. As the Baltanya explains in the Kutat Torah, Maseh, based on Kabbalah. That's every call. And then there are those elements in the Jewish people where there's complete, absolute, indivisible oneness. Where you look at one Jew and you could see every single Jew. You look at another Jew and you could see every single Jew. You look at a Jew and you see him or her, not only as an indispensable part, but literally one chemical compound which is indivisible. And it's not easy. It's not easy to separate the two. In a mikveh you have this, because that's what a relationship is based on. Ishvi isha zachu. To the San Stam the Rakachava explains is a question of Taisvis and Saita. There's a din that a mincha can be brought through Shutfim. A meal grain, a, a, a gift from meal grain, has to be brought through an individual or a tzibur, not through partners. So he asks, how can a woman, a Saita, Taisvis say, bring a mincha? <laughs> it's from her husband's property, so it's Shutfim. That's Taisvis' question, Saita, I think, of base. So the Rekha Chavez says, because it's Harkava Mizgis, it's not Harkava Shechenis. An Isha and an Isha is Harkava Mizgis, so it's not considered two anymore. It's considered one entity. So it's expressed itself even in Alacha, in addition to the Ish Isha Zachu Shechina Shoye Benaya. So therefore, in conclusion, they say the Maisa of one of the great Sadikim. Somebody once came to him and he was having a fight with somebody else. He was having a machloikas, a fight with somebody. So this tzaddik asked him, what's going on? And he said, no, tzvei yidin zaninish maskim. The, the Polish accents. It's Zwei Yidin Zanish Maske Made in Medan, the Grosse Gedilla. Two Yidin, two Jews are in a fight, big deal. So he says, Yeah, yes, attack it, Zwei Yidin. So Zwei Yidin. He says, Take two Yuds and put them one on top of the other. What is it? What does it represent in the trap? In Time Meha Mikra, one on top of the other? Saif Pasuk. It's the end, it's the end of a verse. One on top of the other. We call it in English a colon. But in time, it's called Saif Pasuk. At the end of a Pasuk, they make two dots, one on top of the other. He says, One near the other, what do you have? You have Hashem's name. So he says, If you're going to be one on top of the other, it's going to be Saif Pasuk. It's the end of your relationship with Torah. If you put yourself near each other, then you represent Hashem's name. So when we have, when we speak about the Jewish people, there's three layers of reality, and all layers are very authentic. On one layer, there's Eman, Eman, Anili, Mili. In our world, it's a world of I am I, you are you. There's my soul, your soul, my body, your body, my identity, my identity. And that's part of how we were created. That's not a mistake. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin, I'm obligated to say the world was created for me. For me, not for you. It means there's something about me that I have to give the world that nobody could give. Nobody before me, nobody after me. And the whole world is waiting for that. For that aspect that I could contribute to reality, the whole universe is anticipating it because nobody else could fill those shoes. 
Then there's an element of shevet, of kahal. Every shevet has its characteristics, its place in Eretz Yisrael, its mission, its shlichus, its color, its flag, its destiny. You can't compare Levi to Yisachar, Zvulun to Yehuda, Don to Naftali, God to Asher, Yosef to Binyamin, etc., etc. Each one, their vocation, their shoyrish haneshama, their source, their source. And, then, and all the other Jews are Harkavr Shechenes, its neighbors. And then you have the deepest layer, as we go deeper and deeper into the core, where you reveal, When it comes out from his mouth, it's one. So if it comes from Hashem, if he's revealed in it, there's absolutely no division. What gets revealed is that we're absolute one. We all melt away in complete oneness, in the oneness of Hashem, which encompasses all of us and turns us into a seamless, indivisible whole where there's absolutely no division and no distinction, but it's actually a cosmic oneness of Einoid Malvadi where there's nothing outside of him. And ultimately the purpose is to integrate all the three layers. That Hashem created a Rishus HaYachid as we spoke last week. To go out from Rishus HaYachid into Rishus HaRabim and to bring Rishus HaRabim back into Rishus HaYachid. Have a wonderful week. The Rukh Tshuva has Shalos HaTshuvas. Responses that he wrote. So these are Shalos HaTshuvas that were published in the city of Dvinsk. He was the Rav of Dvinsk. So it's called Shalos HaTshuvas, Tafnes Paneich of Dvinsk. So there he explains that the argument about curdling cheese, milk into cheese right. depends on these two types of partnership. That's what it is. There's a few sources here from Tzafnas yeah. Paneach in this. Yeah. Now he asked uh, the second Medrash, Moshe is not counted, Yeshua is not counted, Aaron is counted, Nodav, Avihu. So, if Shevet Levi didn't sin, you only have 11 tribes, so how are you counting Kayanim? So it could be Moshe is not counted because he's from Shevet Levi, maybe, but it could be Koyhanim because they represent Klal Yisrael. Shluche, the Tzibura, they represent the Tzibur, so it could be they could be counted. Even though Shevet Levi didn't sin, but it could be Koyhanim could be counted. It's interesting. The Shimon holds you need 13. Mm-hmm. Not only every Shevet, you need Bezden also. Yeah. 13. Shimon was the author of Zohar, Pnimi Satayra. So Shimon says you have both. You have each shevet as a kohal, but then you have the Sanhedrin has to bring one for themselves, which represents everybody. Mm-hmm. Rabbi Meir says there's only one, there's no division. Rabbi Yehuda says there's only 12. Rabbi Shimon says there's 12 for every shevet, and you have to have a 13th. Yeah. Yud Gimel, Shar, Yud Gimel is Echad. Mm-hmm. Yud Gimel is Echad. Shar Yud Gimel, the 13th portal. It says there's 12 portals for every shave. It is the 13th. The Sanhedrin had to bring for themselves because they sinned, but also they represented everybody. So that's a deeper of echad. There's a unity. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.